Hello and welcome. We Are Change Melbourne is here on location at Epic Exhibition Park in Canberra. It's fantastic to be here during this important time in history. Reports of over 200,000 people already here with more on the way. I even bumped into an old buddy from high school that I haven't seen in 20 years. So it's a very special occasion. Everyone's in good spirits, which is sensational to see. People are caring, looking out for one another. It's wonderful. People have traveled long distances to be here. It shows the dedication they have to freedom and protecting this country from tyranny. It's very overwhelming for some. Quite a few are emotional at just what's taking place. But yes, we're campaigning for freedom harder than ever. Hopefully we can get some results. There's a lot of people on horns. There's a lot of people with flags and distributing flyers and hats and banners, people giving speeches. There's something here for everyone. So it's very important. Today we're going on a march to Parliament House that will send a clear statement to the government that we've had enough of the corruption and we want it all to end now. Joining me is PB, a viewer of the We Are Change talk show and a supporter of freedom. It's great to see you down here, standing up for human rights and doing your best. What are your thoughts on today? Um, it's heartwarming. It really is. It does my soul good. I thought I was a bit alone there for a while, but that's not the case at all. No. We're seeing a lot of solidarity, a lot of people coming together and a lot of friendships will be made from this and people will be looking back 10 years from now saying I was there, I was at Canberra, we stood up, they'll be telling their grandchildren won't they? Yeah they will, they will be telling their grandchildren and they'll be telling them about the change that we made and um, told like uh, Scott Morrison what's up, I, was, I don't need a jab to go to work, um, that's just... I don't need it, mate. I don't want it. Uh, I'm just a labourer. You know, I'm on the shovel all day, and uh, I'm breathing in dust and uh, in the heat and sweating like a dog. And you want to come along and inject me? Ain't happening. Yeah. And that's the stance that many people need to take. A lot of people are involved in backbreaking labour. They're doing 12-hour days. They deserve to be treated with respect and courtesy, not be faced with medical corruption and a future that is uncertain because they don't want to comply with tyranny. Yeah. The requests made from government are very unreasonable, aren't they? They're, they're unreasonable. They're ridiculous. Um, and we can see it for what it is. We're not stupid. Um, and you ought to listen. You know, open up your ears and your eyes and um, just listen and uh, do, what, we do what we're telling you and like all of us, like together, uh, yeah. Luckily we haven't seen too much of a police presence today like we've seen in the past at Victoria. Uh, it's very overwhelming what we've seen, the police brutality has been extreme. Hopefully they keep their distance from us. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully, uh, yeah, they do the right thing um, and stand up for the people uh, instead of the uh, tyranny. Um, honestly, Scott Morrison and all these politicians, I don't know half of you, but uh, you don't know me. You divided this country. You divided this country. I look at a photo of my grandfather who's in his war uniform as a young 20-year-old, and he's in my soul with, right now. He's with me, telling me, Pete, this is wrong. Politicians, you, you, you tore us apart. You didn't need to do that. We could have been building hospitals if you wanted to and looking after the elderly. First I heard two years ago, it, it affects the elderly and the vulnerable. Look after them. Uh, 90, what was it, 98.9% .9 chance of, like, if you did get it, you might die. Um, and you won't, you won't go down the road of ivermectin or just even, like, you shut down playgrounds. <laughs> like, we're not stupid, mate. That's just not on. 
Exactly. Come on, bro. Exactly. And that's a strong statement you just made. And a lot of the fallen soldiers, people that have hiked the Kokoda Trail, they went to Gallipoli, they fought for future generations to live in peace and prosperity, not be faced under dictatorships and totalitarian regimes. And, uh, and that's our right. Our taxpayers' money pay for the playgrounds, for the barbecue equipment, for all these facilities. So for them to come and try and take it away, that's uh, downright criminal, isn't it? Yeah, Mark, um, it is, it is, and we see it for what it is. Um, and uh, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You should be, you should hang your head very low. I see you there uh, banging on about cases and uh, making people get things shoved up their nose. And come on, I haven't, I haven't played your game for two years, mate, and I'm fine. So uh, there you go, hey? there's the evidence. Yeah, good on you. This is a, yeah. Thank this man, I thank this man. Uh, he's kept me going, him and many other people like mate Mark. So um, that's uh, about it for me. So have a great day, Aussies. You deserve it. You've put up with shit. That's very powerful. Thank you very much for coming on the show. So joining me is Errol. What are your thoughts on today? It's very powerful here at Parliament House, isn't it? It certainly is. It's almost unbelievable. I think, I think we've got a million, don't you think? I think so. And this is going to send a very strong message to the government that we're not going to tolerate this medical corruption any further, will we? No, we will not. No, we will not. Yep. And this is a very important time in history. How do you feel about some of the soldiers that went to fight for our freedom? And it's all in vain. It definitely feels that way, doesn't it? They must be turning in their graves. Yeah. yeah. Hiking up the Kokoda Trail yeah. and, uh, you know, risking their life. Yep. And now it's a complete disrespect to the fallen soldiers. So we've, we've taken up the initiative. So many people have travelled all across the country to be here. Where did you come from today? Come from Tamora. Uh, we're in the seat of Riverina. Um, and Michael McCormack is our um, uh, member. Uh, was um, Deputy Prime Minister at one stage. But um, he uh, really goes all out to celebrate Anzac Day. But what's he doing now? Yeah, that's it. We need to hold these criminals accountable. They are very psychopathic with the restrictions, with the regulations. We've seen the collapse of small business. It's absolutely awful, isn't it? It certainly is, yes. And you've suffered with the worst of it in Melbourne. Yes, yep. yep. Yeah, we've copped the full brunt of it there. Thankfully, we haven't seen any police brutality today. Hopefully, they keep their distance. That's right, yes. Yeah, yep, we don't want that, no. Well, you've shown dedication to your country you're doing the right thing. Thanks for showing up today. My pleasure. Thank you. So I'm here with Corey and Dave. It's an amazing day, very powerful. How far have you travelled? Bermagui. Bermagui, south coast. Oh, OK. So quite a few hours. That... Three hours. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a, a great effort. People are travelling far and wide to get here. They're sick of the medical corruption, the tyranny, the despicable politics that goes on in this country and has done for decades. There is